Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to my first video of Apache Spark series. Guys, in this video, I'll be introducing you uh, to the world of Apache Spark. Let's begin. Guys, Apache Spark is one of the leading big data framework and nowadays it's quite a buzzword, right? And uh, if you apply for uh, any job for big data developer or big data related profiles, you'll find Spark over there, right? So every company is demanding uh, Apache Spark like people right who is proficient who are proficient in it so it's one of the uh, leading big data framework right so let's talk about its history first like Apache Spark actually was developed at UC Berkeley in the year 2009 so it means it's almost one decade ago actually it was developed as a part of uh, the PhD work right it was carried out by Matai Zaharia right under the uh, supervision of uh, Scott Shanker and Stoika. Uh, I'll be talking about them as well in the next uh, uh, frame. Guys, uh, it is also called as lightning fast unified analytics engine for big data and machine learning. Uh, why it is called lightning fast? Let me uh, give you a little information about it. Guys, we all know that Hadoop was a little bit slower uh, because of its nature uh, as it was it, it is storing everything in the secondary storage uh, which is uh, SDFS right and getting data from SDFS is always be a time consuming task right but on the other hand uh, Apache Spark keeps everything in memory which makes it uh, faster than Hadoop and unified means it has got everything under the roof uh, with the likes of machine learning uh, structured data processing graphical data processing so it's a complete package right that's why it's called as lightning fast unified analytics engine uh, and it's one of the leading tool in today's world for data analytics right okay moving further guys these are the creators these are the people who have given us apache spark right uh, right at extreme left we have a, a developer matai zaharia now currently he's a co-founder of uh, databricks one of the leading uh, firm in us and Ian Stoika and Scott Shanker uh, were the doctoral advisors when he was pursuing his PhD, right? So he has uh, given us this Apache Spark, thanks to him. All right, so this is the research paper uh, which he has written uh, way back in 2009. You can see the title was Spark Cluster Computing with Working Sets. Uh, these were the authors and it was written uh, in the University of California, Berkeley. All right, I'll be giving you its uh, link uh, in my description box in case if you want to read it. All right, so guys, as I've already have said, there was some issue with Apache Hadoop, right? Apache Hadoop was a batch processing framework that we all know, and uh, it keeps everything in the secondary storage in the SDFS, right? And we all know that uh, for any intermediate result, it will be interacting with the uh, SDFS to get the like data for next iteration. Let's suppose if we are working with some iterative algorithms with the likes of k-means or page rank algorithm, uh, Hadoop is not an ideal choice because of the fact that it is keeping everything in SDFS and for every iteration it will be fetching data from that disk, right? And we all know uh, from operating system principles like getting data from secondary storage, it's always be a costly and a time consuming task, right? So there was a, some issue with the Hadoop uh, which is taken care by Apache Spark. All right, let's talk about the features of Apache Spark, guys. It's full of features. Uh, first of all, in-memory computation, as I've already have stated, like one of the plus point of Apache Spark, why it is uh, so fast because of its in-memory computation. Second, ease of use, guys. Uh, when we talk about Apache Hadoop, right? Uh, the one thing that we all notice, like. For doing a, a simple task, we have to write a lengthy code in the form of mapper class, reducer class, and driver class, right, in the Java. But on the other hand, in the case of Apache Spark, we have got a multi-language support, and it means you can easily work with your own uh, language which you like it, right? Maybe it is Python, it's Scala, it's SQL, right? And also, it's quite easy to use, right? Whatever you are writing in Hadoop in hundred lines of code, you can write in this five to six lines in the case of Apache Spark, right? This is as easy, right? Third, uh, all the bigger giants like Netflix, Yahoo, eBay have all have deployed Spark at massive scale now, right? And one of the uh, good point about Spark is 
the last one that it has got the it has got the largest open source community in big data right so these are some of its features it's not all complete some of it right which makes it uh, so good all right moving further guys uh, here uh, i'm just displaying here the ecosystem of connectors like we can easily uh, connect our apache spark with these sources right it may be a sdfs it may be hbase cassandra mongodb and so on so it is like full of opportunities like we can easily uh, integrate our spark with these uh, existing tools right it may be kafka right mysql and many more all right if we talk about apache spark components like we have got its own ecosystem you can see it here we got here the uh, spark core Spark Core is guys, it's a, a heart of Apache Spark, right? It is responsible for all the major tasks like scheduling, memory management, right? Uh, here we got uh, the language support like uh, Scala, SQL, Python, Java, R. And there's a one more uh, concept we call RDD, which is embedded with the Spark Core as well, which I'll be talking about in next video. So okay, we got the first component as Spark SQL. Guys, if you want to interact with uh, structured data, we got Spark SQL, Spark Streaming. If you want to uh, interact with real time, like if you want real time analytics, you can go with uh, Spark Streaming. If you need some uh, machine learning support, we got the support of MLlib, right? Like in the case of Hadoop, we got Apache Mahouth. Here we got uh, MLlib. And one of the another uh, important component, it is graph uh, graphics, right? Uh, graphics is like, like uh, when we when we deal with the network data right uh, when we are having a relationship when we need to find relationship we got a we got a tool called graphics it's responsible for graph processing all right let's move further the first component as i've already talked about spark sql we all have uh, uh, studied the uh, dbms and sql right if you want to deal with structured data we got a uh, spark sql available right it means like anyone who is good at SQL but not good at Java maybe can easily use uh, like Apache Spark to interact or to analyze data. It was not the case of Apache Hadoop, right? You can see one can read data stored in a RDBMS table or different file formats with structured data which can be CSV file as well, right? All right, next is Spark MLlib. Spark MLlib, as I've already have stated, it's machine learning library, guys, Apache Spark comes with library containing common machine learning algorithms with the likes of uh, linear regression, right, decision tree, and, and many more, right? You'll find it uh, in the Spark documentation as well. So we got this uh, fully fledged um, Spark machine learning library, uh, abbreviated as MLlib. Graphics uh, is a library for manipulating graphs. Guys, uh, this graphics is based upon mathematical graph theory. All right, so if we have, if you want to deal with the data which is represented in the form of network graphs, where we want to find relationships or we want to find some routes, some connections, some relationships, like uh, with the likes of like today, uh, in today's era, the COVID situation is going on, right? And if I want to find out like who is the immediate contact of that COVID-19 infected person, okay, I want to find the immediate contacts. So in those scenarios, graphics may be a handy tool, right? So it is a library for manipulating graphs. And last thing, we got Spark Streaming. As I've already have stated, like if you want to deal with the real-time data or if you want to uh, deal with the data which is continuous coming from a particular source, right? You can uh, use the Spark Streaming. So, so this, uh, with this, guys, uh, uh, the purpose of this video was just to briefly introduce the world of Apache Spark, right? It's a quite a big uh, framework and we'll be uh, discussing all its important points in the videos to come, right? The next video which I'll be uh, coming with, it will be a RDD, which is the basic data structure of Apache Spark. I hope you must have understood the concepts of Apache Spark. In case if you find something is not clear, kindly comment on this video. Thanks for watching guys. See you in next video.